what's going on YouTube uh, today I wanted to go over sharpening so that you know how to sharpen your plane blades so you can actually use your planes um, so I, I've tried many different uh, whetstones like well, I started off with the cheap whetstones from Amazon and I mean they work but the problem is keeping them keeping them flat so the best thing this is the best system that I've found right here I've attached everything to this board so these are uh, trend diamond plates they stay flat you don't have to worry about flatness and they last forever I have a 300 600 1200 and then this is made by Shapton glass it is a it's a whetstone uh, attached to a piece of float glass and this is 16,000 grit which is crazy but this thing works awesome and then just a piece of leather attached to a piece of wood with buffing compound I think pretty much all of this you can get on Amazon um, the only thing that you would have to go somewhere else for is probably one of these uh, so basically this holds the blade it's got a wheel on the bottom which I'll show you so it you have complete control over your blade as you're sharpening it and then just an old crappy steel ruler and I'll show you why so first off you're gonna want to take the chip breaker off the blade And the first part I usually start with is making sure that the back is flat. And you don't have to flatten the whole back. You just literally need to uh, flatten that very leading edge. Which I'm going to zoom this in. So on the back of the blade, this very leading edge is all you really need to be perfectly flat you don't have to do the whole entire thing because it, it's actually kind of hard to do that because the blade sticks to the sharpening plates and it's very hard to push it so um, this one's pretty flat already so I'm not gonna start on the 300 usually you would you know if it's real bad start with the 300 and if you don't do a ton of woodworking you could probably just get away with the 1200 and the shaft and glass and not need the rest but if you plan on hitting a nail here and there I recommend getting all of them and the, the 300 is great for flattening the shaft and glass stone because you do have to flatten the shaft and glass stone it does not stay flat all right so this is just some windex mixed with water so what i do is i stick the ruler right on the very edge of the plate put the bottom of the blade down let it sit on that ruler so it, the ruler basically just picks the blade up ever so slightly and then you want to keep you want to keep the the blade edge within the first I don't know half inch the very edge you're gonna go back and forth So basically like that. So you're just sliding it up and down like that. And just get that back nice and flat. With the leading edge flat. Right. 
now we'll move over to the shaft and glass stone. Yeah, and you can see on the shaft and glass stone, you can see where the, the metal started coming off from the blade. And you can see the nice polish. Or can you? Yeah. See that? Just the very leaning edge is polished. Now we can move on to the bevel. So you want to know the width of your blade. This one's two inches. Um, so you can see some some yellow numbers on there. And I'm on 25 degrees. That's what I want. And then on this, we're on the yellow. If you move this thing down, you'd be on the red. Move it up, you're on the green. So we're on the yellow. And then we go by the yellow numbers. 25 degrees There's a little and this is made by Veritas this is like 90 bucks But it's worth every penny. I've tried a million different uh, You know jigs for sharpening and You can buy some cheap ones on Amazon they but the problem with those is they grab they grab the blade by the side and the wheel is very small so it has a tendency to rock and there is no since it's pinching on the sides you can't adjust the blade by knocking it around a little bit if you're a little off so this has a line a little notch and then they have like a little measuring system here Slide that notch over until you're at the two. Focus, you fuck. There we go. Two. And then you flip it upside down. The bevel is, uh, well, if this is upside down, the bevel would be up. Carefully slide that in and there's a little There's a little like fence on the side here to keep the blade square slide up to your stop And then there's two knobs on the top that you tighten down And that's the other cool thing about the Veritas one is it comes with this guide that tells you how far the blade needs to be sticking out in front of this jig to be sharpening at 25 degrees the other ones just come with the jig there is no 25 degree stop blocks you have to make your own out of a piece of wood and figure out the angles or the lengths for yourself so crank that in there and then you can take this guide off now also on the side here, this wheel is on a cam, so by, there's a little notch on the side, by turning this forward or bringing the notch so it's facing forward, 
you're actually moving the wheel up slightly, so it would bring it, you know, at a more severe angle. I'm just going to stick with that one for now and see what happens. just had to you got to pay attention to where the material is coming off and adjust it if necessary You know what it is is throwing me off i think i sharpened this blade last time with the tormek which is a machine and I'll, I'll show that too sometime but the tormek it doesn't create a perfectly flat bevel it it's it's never perfectly flat it has a slight concave to it so when you sharpen it's like hitting at the hitting at the bottom hitting at the top but not in the middle. So I was like, what the heck's going on here? That's, that's what it is. Okay, now we're getting there. I just wanted to get rid of that little concave spot. It was bugging me. And then you just keep tapping it with the screwdriver back and forth until you get a nice square line going across the whole thing. You want it as square as possible. And this, I'm showing you a worst case sharpening. Because usually you don't have to go 3, 6, 12, 1600, then strop. Sometimes you can just come back and just hit the strop again. Just to, you know, touch it up and get it sharp. Or just go 1200, strop, done. But if you hit a nail or anything, then you're starting at 300. So, once you're happy with your 300, and, and it's as even as you can get it, at this point, you should be able to run your finger up the back side here, and you should feel a little burr started. If you don't feel that burr, 
then you might not have ground down enough. You have to start this burr. If you don't start the burr, then it will not be sharp. All right, so now we're gonna move to 600 and keep going. And actually, this is where you can, now that we have the burr and we have our wheel cam all the way back, it has three settings. So we can rock the wheel forward just one notch. So now we won't have to grind this, we won't have to grind this entire bevel. We're just going to focus more on the leading edge so it doesn't take as long. Oh yeah, okay. I went a little overboard. It's just literally a tap goes a long way. And again, that's just what like half water, half Windex so that, you know, I don't want these uh, diamond plates to rust. Yeah. Okay, now we'll move down to the 1200. Shouldn't need long here because it seems pretty square. Yeah. Okay, now the last one. And this last one makes a huge difference. Still got our nice, our nice burr on the back. Sixteen thousand. The 16,000 really starts to polish it, so you can really see where you're, where you're hitting and where you're not. And by the way, this is much easier to do on a workbench, but I just didn't feel like dragging the camera down there. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. 
All right, so now at this point, you have a metal burr that's rolled over. It's rolled over that edge. And, and you don't want to just snap it off. So you, you want to loosen this up. Carefully pull it out. And now we'll move on to the strop. So usually the strops come with, like on Amazon, you can order a strop and it will come with one of these green sticks of buffing compound. Some people put oil on the leather first and then rub this in, but I don't know. I just rub the compound on it. And then every, every long, like once in a long while, I'll take a sacrificial knife and go outside and go against the grain. And it will just scrape off. You know, not like at, at an angle, but straight up and down. Like a knife straight straight up and down go against the grain of the leather and it will just kind of peel all the crap off all right so now what i do first before we go into the leather is i'll take this this stone and and uh, bring it up high get a little water overshoot the end over the down grab it evenly and slowly bring it back and sideways at the same time over the stone to just pull that burr up all right and this is this is the only part you really you don't need the um, you don't need the jig, the sharpening jig for this. The strop you can just you really got to lean into it though. So let me get reset up. All right, so I mean I guess it doesn't really matter, but I usually start with the bottom side down. You know, you want you don't have to hold it perfectly flat. I just hold it as flat as I can and get your hand on top and just draw it backwards. And be careful cuz I've really cut myself bad doing this a few times. All right, now flip it. You want to you want to rock it forward until you're, you know, right on that nose. You can kind of feel it with your finger when you're, yeah, see, right there. Then I'll grab it, get my hand on. And you want to be leaning right over. Right over it. And just lock your wrists in place and pull it back. I'm flipping it. I'm flipping it one more time. All right, now we'll check it. Wipe all the green goo off. Make sure both of your edges are nice and polished.
nice and polished. All right. So once you have both of those nice, you get a polished edge, meaning a polished edge. I mean, that's like a mirror. We'll give it a test. Nice and sharp. Now with a with a bevel up plane, like the Veritas bevel up planes they make, um, that this would be it. Just back in the plane, bevel up, go to town. Now this is a bevel down plane, so, and this is the first thing I learned the hard way with bevel down planes is not so much on like if you buy a Lee Nielsen it's not going to more than likely it's going to come good but if you get a cheaper one now the back of the chip breaker has a little flat a little flat edge at the top here and if that doesn't mate with this absolutely perfectly what happens is the, the wood gets jammed in that little, like, so if you hold it like this, and there's any hole there, the wood goes in there, gets jammed, and the plane doesn't cut. So a few planes I've had to carefully, without grinding all this away, because you can see, or can you? That's really hard to get, but there's a little little stepped edge there. If you grind that all the way flat with this, then it's all over. But what I've had to do is, you know, wet the stone and hold this. Just on the very edge of the stone on a downward angle, so I'm only getting that lip, and go back and forth and get it flat. And the way you can test... And this is how you get the chip breaker back on. I go like this. Bring the blade out. Swing it up past the chip breaker. Bring the chip breaker in and then work that chip breaker all the way up. So if you bring it back just a little bit so you don't cut yourself and then take your fingernail after you tighten it. Yeah, if you can get your fingernail under there, then wood will get under there. You want this as smooth as possible. This transition's got to be as smooth as possible. Now these chip breakers, you want like, you, you want the chip breaker lower than the edge of the blade, like a uh, 32nd, just a tiny bit. Snug it a little. Make sure it's all square. And lock it home. You probably won't be able to see it, but that blade is just... Yeah, there you go. Just ever so slightly. 
just a tiny bit above the chip breaker and and that is it and this is ready to go back in the plane well i hope that was helpful uh you guys saw the planes and uh now you know how to sharpen the blades uh we'll go over the tormek sometime that's a nice machine but it's really expensive but if you're taking out nails uh, this takes too long so you're gonna want a tormek if you plan on taking nails out all the time like I do, so uh, hope that was helpful and I'll see you guys on the next one, thanks.